What's up everybody? Adam here with E-Trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Yakima Hang Tight. So this is going to be a really, really versatile rack. One, we have the four bike configuration, but if you even have more bikes you want to carry with you, we're going to have a six bike configuration. So if you have a lot of bikes, this is pretty much the only way you're going to be able to get six bikes to and fro. It's going to work with not only your kids' bikes, not, over, not only your carbon fiber road bikes, but also your mountain bikes. So there really isn't a whole lot of limitations. Basically you just need a two inch hitch and you need to make sure that your bikes aren't going to be anywhere over 37 and a half pounds to be able to use this. So I think it's going to be great for you mountain bikers that need a little bit more ground clearance to get into the thicker trails you guys may be riding in. Or if you just have a big family and a big car and a lot of people to go riding with, this is going to be a great option as well. This is such an upgrade when it comes to a four bike rack. If you have a four bike platform, we're gonna have so much length from our hitch all the way back. And that's all gonna be pretty much level with the ground. So we're gonna scrape a lot. So with this one, it only sticks out about 20 inches and it's only a couple feet off of the ground. So all you have to really do is just measure out about 20 inches from your hitch receiver. And then on the bottom inside lip, measure that to the ground. And that's gonna be the ground clearance you are going to be working with. So what we did, we actually went the hard way uh, to get up here. Usually there's a smoother way over there, but we went the really, really steep way up this hill to test it out and we didn't scrape. So definitely check that out. So as you can see, that was a pretty extreme route to get up here, but we didn't have any issues, so that's always good. Sometimes with the platform style racks, you're gonna hit the rack and it's gonna damage that. But with this, if you're gonna hit anything, you might hit the bottom of your wheels, but I think if you do that, you're probably somewhere you shouldn't be driving. I'm just not a guy that drives to a trail and just parks on the asphalt and then goes and rides from there. I like to get in there. I like to get out in the wilderness and this way, you don't really have to worry about your bikes or the rack getting damaged. So let's go ahead and take all of our bikes off. So basically right here is what's gonna really differentiate it from the hangover. Hangover is gonna use the forks. It's just a little bit more hassle getting up here. This is really nice. One, all you have to do is just push that in. It has a nice little sleeve too, and it's extra long. So it's really simple to kind of put it in there and then pull from the bottom. I really like that. So we're gonna have two of them and you can undo these without the bike really moving at all. Like this is extremely solid even without the straps cause like all that weight is really pulling down on it. So it's not really gonna make any contact with the other bikes, but look how stable that is without the straps. I think that's awesome. So we're gonna have the same exact thing down here. And this is the longer of all the wheelbases that we have, up to 50 inches of what we're working with. And let me take this off so I can show you really why we can get all those different wheelbases on here. Just lift it up real quick. It's not too difficult. I mean, if you don't overload the rack, 37 and a half pounds per bike, it doesn't take that much effort to put it up and take it down. If I were to level those, meaning it's a little bit harder to put it up than to take it down. But talking about the wheelbase is down here. So this is gonna pivot. So for like those kiddos bikes, it's kind of nice and straight. But when the wheelbase gets a little bit longer, you can rotate that down. So I really like that. And we are gonna have these little knobs here. So if you do need to kind of slide this around to get a custom fit for your setup, you can do that, which is awesome. But it really isn't that difficult to take them all down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. As you can see, same setup with the kiddos bikes. It's all the same and it's all just as easy for each bike. One thing to think about, this style of handlebar right here, the one with the little bar across the top. So we're not gonna be able to really get it to where we want it like that. So we are gonna have to use this right here as the tie down. 
and it typically is a little bit skinnier so you're going to see a little bit more wiggle with these type of handlebars but it still works so you don't have to worry about that be mindful of what kind of accessories you have on your bars. If you have a light or like a phone case carrier or just a reflector like this, it will get in the way. You could strap it over top of it, but it might eventually wear down that component. So be mindful of where you put this. I just suggest if you're gonna put it anywhere, kind of put it maybe next to the grips on the side and just not in the middle right here. But we did it and it still worked. If you really do want some accessories on your bars, just be mindful of where you put them. So this will help you out. From outside to outside, it's about five and a half inches. So what you wanna do is you can take that, we can go over to our bikes and then measure up on the handlebars. So like right here with this little reflector, this gave me a little bit of trouble. So we'll take five and a half, about right there. So if we wanted to move this, so we still want it. You can just put it like right up here outside of that five and a half range. So like right here is off limits. You can put it on there, but it might, you know, break over time. But right here is free game and so is over here. So let's just say we just unloaded all of our bikes. We're about to go on a ride. If you have a Tahoe like this or something with the glass that folds up independently from the rear hatch like this, from the center of the hitch pin hole to the closest part of the rack, which is right around here, it's going to be about 15 inches so it's going to be able to open up like this even with the bikes installed so that's kind of nice but if you do have like a forerunner or something like that that the window actually rolls down then you're going to be able to access whatever you need in the back but when your bikes are on we're not going to be able to use a tilting feature but once they're off we can so all you got to do is put your foot on it step on it and it's going to lean back just like that and even if you do have this on your truck well, we have plenty of room right here, so you're going to be able to put down your tailgate, which is awesome. You can also completely open up the hatch and grab whatever you need inside of here. So that's always awesome. A tilt-away feature is almost essential for me, but you do have to take the bikes off. One thing you can do, you can use the Yakima Swing Away. So with that, you'll be able to open up that rear hatch without having to take your bikes off. Basically, it's just gonna go in between your hitch and your shank of the bike rack, and then we're gonna be able to swing it away. You can go on our website and see it, and we did do a review video on it, so check that out. I think that's perfect for Jeep guys, for truck guys, or just anybody who really just wants to keep the bikes on there and still have access to the back of your vehicle. So we showed you a road bike, we showed you a carbon fiber bike, mountain bike, and a kid's bike, but you can also use an e-bike or a fat tire bike on here. It's gonna have to be a little bit lighter of an e-bike and a lighter fat tire bike. We have one here, but it's 45 pounds. So as long as it's under 37 and a half, you're gonna be able to use it. When it comes to wheel diameter, about 20 to 29 inches is what we wanna be, which is pretty much anything. And then we just wanna make sure with those fat tire bikes that the width doesn't get any bigger than five inches on the tire. So on the four version, these bars are gonna be about 45 and a half inches wide. So it's not really messing with my taillights, so I really don't need to think of that. But if you do go to the six, it might start to block it. But with the bikes, how they are, I don't think it's gonna completely block the vision of the taillights. So I still think you're gonna be safe and I don't think you're gonna to need to add any lights on the bike rack itself. The rack does come with an anti rattable and with this rack being relatively big, it's about 65 pounds, you really want that. So as you can see, we have a lot of shaking going on here, but no play on the inside of the shank. So that's something you really want, especially with a massive rack like this, and especially if you have the six bike version. So it comes with it and that's good. And on the other end of the bolt, it's gonna be a little locking core. So this comes with it, and it does have a locking core on the inside, so you can lock this to your hitch straight out of the box. So now, I am curious to see how long it's gonna take me to load up all four bikes by myself. So we're gonna set up a little GoPro, and we're gonna see how long it takes. Doo -doo. Good. Well, we stopped the timer. It's about three minutes to load up all 
of my bikes. So I would say that's not any longer than any of the four bikes. Honestly, some of the ones that have the center mast, it's kind of a pain to get the ones closer to the vehicle. With all of these, they're all equally easy to get on and off. So that is definitely something extremely unique to this. And I think this was actually really, really easy compared to all the other ones that we have here. So definitely a check when it comes to ease of use. So that's pretty much the gist with the hang type, but there is a couple things that you can add on to it that don't come with it. One, a cable lock. So with this, the nice thing about it is it doesn't come with a core pre-installed inside, so you can actually go and match it up to the cord that locks your bike to the hitch. So it'll be the same exact key. And basically what you do with this, you'll just take it and then you'll loop through all the frames of your bikes and you'll come back and you come through this little hanger right here. And then once that's done, push it through this side and then it'll clip onto this on the end. Obviously we're not gonna have this much uh, extra, especially when we have multiple bikes, but this doesn't come with it. And I do think this is something you might wanna use just because if you are grocery shopping or you just like to keep your bikes on there, this is uh, definitely wanna lock them on up just to give yourself peace of mind. And this thing, it does turn heads, so you're gonna grab some attention with this. So might as well lock all your stuff down to make sure it's safe. Another thing, if you're a Jeep guy, so if you have a stock tire like this, we're not really gonna have any issues, but if you have a bigger tire, which majority of you Jeep guys do because, you know, bigger tires on a Jeep look awesome. So Yakima does have an extension. This is gonna cut your hitch capacity in half, but this will definitely help you clear this spare tire if you have an aftermarket big tire on your Jeep. Another thing I would suggest though, if you really need to have this little extra extension, you can get the same amount of extension, which is about seven and a half inches. You can get that same exact thing with the Yakima swing away system. But with that, it's gonna be a little bit less cost effective, but you do get a function of being able to rotate it out and be able to open up this back hatch without having to remove the bikes. I like that, so if you really need this, I would just get the swinging waist system because it's awesome. I must say, when I took this on my lunch break and I went and grabbed lunch, it did turn heads, and I honestly felt kind of cool because this is a different type of rack that you see. You usually don't see something like this, so when people see it, you know that they're thinking, wow, this guy's really a biker, he's really into it, or he's doing something crazy because this is just so much different than all the different bike racks that we have here. And I really like that, you know, whether you're actually that overlanding, let's go off grid and ride our bikes type guy, or if you're just one that just goes to the trailhead, parks on asphalt, and then goes to the trail with your bikes from there. I think just by getting this, you're gonna at least look like the hardcore biker, which I like. So I think it's really for a lot of different people. You know, it's gonna work with all these different types of bikes. It looks cool and I just don't think, I don't see any limitations with getting this. Try getting six bikes to and fro without using the six version of this. It's literally impossible unless you put a four on the back and something on your roof. But I think it has everything you really wanna look for in a bike rack and there's no limitations whatsoever when it comes to the Yakima Hang Tight. So I would definitely recommend it. I want one of these so Hopefully Yakima sends me one, but I would definitely recommend it to you guys just to cover all the bases so you're prepared for anything that comes your way.